Hey everyone, today is Saturday, June the 3rd, 2023. This is Wes Fryer. I'm a communitarian prepper. What does that mean? It means rather than preparing for some fantasy zombie apocalypse to be a lone wolf survivalist, uh, I am preparing to get ready for emergencies that are extremely likely to take care of not only my family, but also some of our neighbors hence the name Communitarian. And today, what I'd like to share is uh, my journey with a generator that's gonna be able to provide some backup power for our ho- for some appliances in our house, not whole house uh, backup power, uh, and then we're also gonna be able to use to go camping. So I wanna just share a little bit of background about this generator that I got, what I've done today, and then kind of where I'm at with my test, because what I'm gonna actually do is I've actually turned this thing on for the first time, uh, but I've got extension cords run uh, to my uh, refrigerator and my deep freeze, and I'm gonna do a test um, to you know see that this thing works, and so we're gonna run this for a while. So uh, if you'd like to have more information and resources uh, relating to pre- emergency preparedness in a lot of different ways, um, you can visit uh, comprep, C-O-M-M-P-R-E-P dot westfriar.com. Um, and I've started a new YouTube channel to go ahead and share this. I've also got another YouTube channel that's very eclectic and I've got a lot of barbecue stuff. I'm a middle school STEM teacher, a lot of technology things, but I thought I would just kind of put my, my prepper stuff here on this separate channel. So uh, this is a Furman WHO 3242 dual fuel generator. And I picked this up at Costco uh, on sale. I think I got it. I think I got it for $600. I want to say that maybe it's 800 anyway it was like it was at least a hundred dollars off it might have been 200 dollars off it was a good deal um, we have used generators a couple times when we have been camping um, i've had a when we lived in oklahoma we moved from oklahoma city almost a year ago um, and of course in oklahoma we had all kinds of ice storms and we had power outages we actually had a power outage where the transformer <clears throat> just on our block went out and we were without power um, for over a day it took a while for the power company to come out and, and replace that thing because it was just old and it had gone out. Anyway, we've used generators uh, when we've been car camping before. Uh, we've uh, rented trailers from RV Share. We used to have a pop-up trailer back in the day and actually we're hoping to get back into RVing as empty nesters. And so anyway, I've got a little experience and then one time when we uh, rented an RV, it actually came with a generator and so that was kind of nice. So uh, the reason why I picked this instead of just a smaller you know, size is <laughs> I, was, I was actually kind of hoping I might be able to plug this in to the house and have a transfer switch, which is a switch that you put at your circuit box, basically where, well, where the power comes in, which is usually where your, your circuit breaker box is. Um, and then, you know, be able to flip that switch and, hey, we're cut off from the grid. Now we're going to just get our power, you know, from our generator. Problem, this thing doesn't actually put out 220. Um, it does have this larger, uh, it's called a TT30R, but it's still 120 volt. That's, a, that's an RV plug. Um, and so then it's also got the two regular 120, uh, you know, standard three prong electrical um, p- p- plugs. And so what I've, what I've done, and this is like today's test day, I've had this thing, I've probably actually had this a couple months. Um, this is dual fuel, which is something else I'm interested in. You know, gasoline uh, has a shelf life. And if you're going to store gas for a long time, you need to put stabilizer in it. And so, and also, <laughs> it's a good idea to get 100% Uh, gasoline to get no ethanol gasoline that's kind of hard to find now in 2023 we have some gas stations that have it it's freaking expensive it's way more expensive you know I think right now we're running like 330 a gallon or something like that Um, but the no ethanol is is like 450 or something like that it's quite a bit more expensive but you can get it um, and you're gonna have better long you're you're going to burn cleaner and longer on anything that uses gasoline, like a generator. And so I just decided, hey, I'm just gonna use no ethanol. So I've got a five gallon tank. Um, You don't want to leave the gasoline in your generator. So what I've done, uh, first off, of course, is I've read a bit of the manual um, and I have uh, put my oil in this. And so you wanna, of course, make sure you put oil in your uh, generator. And then I've gone ahead and uh, basically filled it up with gas. This will hold almost two gallons. It's 1.8 gallons. You know, what I don't know, and this is where, like, I think I'm a STEM teacher, right? And I started life as a fourth grade math teacher. 
Like, this is a great word problem. This is a real world math problem because I have two different appliances, a fairly large refrigerator freezer, and then a smaller, um, like, chest deep freeze. And so, we're going to, I'm going to need to eventually, and I'm going to be figuring this out, how much draw do both of those devices have, and then what's the output uh, amperage, electricity, and, and uh, amperage and volts, and all that good stuff with electricity that you learn, uh, that some of us learn, you know, I took <laughs> kind of one of every engineering at the Air Force Academy, including electrical engineering with Ohm's Law and all that good stuff, but can I you know, explain to you in detail how all those things work? Not yet. But now, as a communitarian prepper, I have a really specific reason to learn, you know, the, 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 all the stuff about electricity. Maybe I'm saying Ohm's Law and I'm thinking about ham radio because I'm also uh, working on my ham radio license. Anyway, yes, electricity, and we've got to figure out, um, you know, this does have the capacity, I'm 99% sure, to easily power those two things, but could I power some other things? And this is also test day to see how it really works. So uh, what I'm going to do, I think, before I power, well, maybe I'll go ahead and power this up. Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to go ahead and power this thing up. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the situation. So why, do, why am I down here on the ground? Well, well, um, I'm thinking at this point that we're hopefully going to be able to have capacity to, you know, run with run our um, our refrigerator and freezer for like 24 hours you know if we if we lose power um, I think this is a good idea as you think about preparing and emergency preparedness is different scenarios um, you know it's wonderful to have a generator as RV and car campers um, I sleep with a CPAP I don't know if it's been like three or four years now that I've had a CPAP a breathing machine at night but um, you know that's a we like to camp off the grid and so it's a challenge how are we going to do that and so anyway uh, there's a whole other set of math problems I, I think maybe i'll make some word problems that i'll just post separately with a little video you know the real word math problems anyway this thing if it's going to be running for uh any length of time uh may not be a beautiful day it's like 79 degrees out here it's going to be in, in the 80s uh we've just had a beautiful spring here in the Piedmont, which is where we are in Charlotte, um, which is just kind of between the mountains and the beach. It could rain, it does rain. It rains here a lot. That's part of why the trees are so green. Oh my gosh, look at all these wonderful, beautiful trees in my backyard. Um, so we need this to be protected. So we've got a nice little um, table, you know, here in the back. And I, I needed to think about where am I going to actually position this generator so that the extension cords that I have are long enough and my house can stay secure and I'm not going to be like leaving an outside door open that's going to, you know, present security issues. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is fire this thing up. Um, of course, you know, as, as well as putting oil in it and, and gasoline, uh, you don't want to have your electrical plugs plugged in at the time that you start it. So you want to you let this thing uh, run for a little bit and then you're and then you go ahead and um, plug things in. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these in and then we'll go in and see, I may, I may recruit my daughter, one of my daughters who's here to uh, shoot some video for that part because it's a little bit hard sometimes to shoot that video as well as move stuff around. Okay, the other thing that I did, and this is nice, this is an electrical start generator. So there is a cable to be able to sit here like a lawnmower and pull this thing, but how nice to have an electrical start so the steps to getting this thing going, I've, I've got, you know, oil and gas. I've got this thing charged. I charged it actually a couple months ago, probably. Um, I'm gonna, I've, and, and so I'm going to go ahead and just flip this switch. I've got, this is the switch that goes between propane uh, gas and electrical, or sorry, gasoline. Um, that's another reason I have this. So in terms of having more capacity, um, LP gas, I think, stores uh, longer than... Um, you know, just plain gasoline. And so that's another another thing that I'm thinking about as far as preparing. So we've selected gas. I've just flipped this to the middle. I'm going to pull the choke out. I'm just going to push this a little bit for it to start and then I'll let it run a little bit and then I'll turn the choke off. All right, and I had this thing going a little while ago, so that's why it didn't really need much choke. Um, so there we go. We're running now. There's an eco mode on this. Right now I'm not gonna run on eco mode. Okay, went ahead and the green light has lit here. 
and then it's giving me a digital display. Maybe I should show this. Let me stop and I'll show you. Alright, so uh, I've got my readout here uh, showing 125, and then I'm showing 60, and I'm showing zero. I think that's my draw. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. is going to happen. I thought I was going to need to get a separate like device, appliance device from Amazon to figure out what the draw was. I think I'm going to be able to see when I turn these things on what the individual draw is for those. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll show you my setup here as far as um, plugs and things and then I'll, uh, I'll, plug, I'll plug in my appliances. We'll see it. what this thing uh, does at load. Alright, so uh, I could pull this thing under the table, obviously, if we're going to start to get weather, but I've got my electrical cords here, um, and I've decided to go ahead and run them um, just in this little sliding door that we've got <clears throat> in our sunroom. And so, all right, so I've got these things actually plugged in, deep freezes plugged in, and I've plugged in the air conditioner. So the air conditioner. No, I'm not plugging the air conditioner in. Um, I've got the fridge plugged in. There's not a light on the deep freeze, but you know, lights are on here in the fridge, so we're good. So if we go back out to the generator and watch the dog fight. The generator readout is really not changing at all. What I was expecting I might see is Something showing me my load. Okay, I'll just make a few more comments and kind of wrap this up. Um, so, this is the first time I've tested. This is the first time I've had the generator on. This is the first time I've, you know, had my extension cords plugged in. This is the first time I've tested this at all. Um, so, I've written down a couple things that I need to get the wooden dowel, you know, to secure the sliding door, the foam insulation piece that I'm going to need to make to insulate that so it doesn't have, you know, hot air, cold air blowing in. Um, what I'm really interested in is what the additional capacity of my generator is going to be when I have both my, you know, my refrigerator and my deep freeze plugged in because we'd like to be able to run as many other, you know, appliances and things like that as we can. Uh, you know, in a, an actual emergency, it's going to be important to have internet, uh, cell phones. We're going to need to charge things. Um, so I'll probably make a list of some of the other things that I need to get. Um, we've got some power strips, but you know, again, like this is just rehearsal. Um, I, emergency preparedness is a journey with a lot of different steps and a lot of different aspects. And so being able to provide electrical power, emergency electrical power, um, in the case of an outage is definitely important today. Um, it's not something that we can just snap our hands, you know, go, go, go to the store and get a generator and hey, we've got everything that we need. There's a lot of different issues with respect to, you know, having the extension cords you need, figuring out where you're going to securely keep your generator, um, you know, because I didn't even talk about exhaust, but you know, you don't, you know, this absolutely can't be run indoors. It can't be run in the garage. It's got to be run outside, but it needs to be protected, you know, from the elements. Um, man, new gas things are such a pain uh, to uh, basically pour. Um, but you know, with gasoline storage, when you get that, um, this is stabilizer. So I'm gonna, you know, get my gasoline. I'm gonna I'm gonna run this thing uh, empty today till it goes off because I want to. I don't want to store gasoline in it. But I'm gonna you know get my my gas tank filled up again with gas. I'm going to you know get my stabilizer in there. Uh, I'm gonna record when I put that gas in there. Eventually, I'm going to get my LP my LP gas tank filled, and I'm gonna do a test with that. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm topped off with oil. Um, you know, that I've got enough, this is just no, 10W30 oil, I've got another can, can of it, this is what came, you know, with the generator. It took almost all of it to initially put it in. Um, anyway, all the things. So, if this has been helpful to you, I hope in some small way uh, this has inspired you to think about your own 
emergency preparedness, uh, what you're doing to get ready uh, electrically. I'm sure there's people watching this video that know a heck of a lot more than I do about all of this. So if you've got suggestions, tips, or ideas, please share them. Um, again, you can get the resources that I'm posting. Uh, and I started, I kind of started this line of thinking a few years ago, and I started like, I was gonna do this sermon series, but I don't know, it's not, it's not exactly a sermon um, that I was gonna use, that I was on a summary when I went to Pittsburgh last summer um, at a museum. All, those aren't on this Communitarian Prepper YouTube channel, they're on my other channel. No, actually I cross-posted them, I think they are. Anyway, I've been thinking about this for quite a while. I've been working on this for quite a while, and I'm going to keep working on this, right? Because this is kind of a hobby of mine. Uh, I think emergency preparedness is important for a lot of reasons. I'm an Eagle Scout. I got the emergency preparedness merit badge, you know, way back in the day. Uh, it's just, it's one of these things that we need to do a variety of things to get ready. And so I'm going to just continue to share my journey. So let me know if you've got any tips and suggestions. Be safe, uh, be prepared, and don't live in fear because there's all kinds of folks that are trying to fill our minds with fear and worry and anxiety today. I think that having some, taking some steps to be a little bit better prepared for possible emergencies and possible crises can help with that. Um, but ultimately, I would say it's our faith in God and our faith in Jesus Christ and the abiding faith that we have in his provision that can give us freedom from the anxiety that might fill our our minds if we just simply turn on the television or the radio or the podcast or whatever and just get filled up with all that. Okay, you got a mini sermon at the end if you stayed. Have a great day.